I kind of feel like it's time for a build project. So let's do one. I've been using my Dr. Z amp as my gigging amp for a while now. And the only complaint I have is that the foot switch that controls the variable boost that comes with it doesn't have an indicator. So it sits out front and if you turn it on or turn it off and you have it set kind of subtle things for just a little bit of a solo boost kind of thing, you don't really know if it's on and you can forget. I want to turn it into a pedal that lets you know that it's on and lets you know that it's off without interfering with any of the electronics inside of here for working the amp. So let's get a coffee. And I'm probably gonna to put together a long version showing you every step of the way, and also a short version that just gets to the, the real gist of putting, in, putting an LED circuit into a little pedal like this. So let's get to it. This is a foot switch from my Dr. Z Antidote amp. Problem being, you could click it in, walk away, and sort of forget that it's on or off, and there's no indicator. So I need to be really simple, and I need to just install a little bit of an LED light or similar in this box. So let's take it apart, see what's it, what it's made of, and what it'll take to basically have a light go on and off when you flick the switch. Now let's take this apart. I'm gonna trip. A single pole double throw switch, a latching switch, so it stays on or stays off when you click it, basically. I mean, Technically, it redirects to one terminal or the other, depending upon which state the switch is in, and it stays until you change it. But it's just a single loop coming in from the amp, and then it looks like in parallel, there's some sort of resistance circuit. So that, that explains the variable volume boost that you get with this signal. That also means that we could put here a double pole, double throw switch, basically a duplicate of this circuit on the same switch. And that would enable us to line up with this circuit and put like an LED battery powered circuit on the other side. So we don't want to interfere with this at all because we don't want any change in the electronics on this side, but we could do something else on the other side of the switch. And uh, basically, I mean, as simple as it sounds, turn a light on and off. All right, let's get started. If we design a circuit to do what we want to do, this is that same switch, but we're going to replace it with a, a double pole, double throw switch. Right now it's a single pole, double throw switch, right? It can go one of these two throws, but it's only one side, it's a single pole. And this is what it does. It's got some guitar electronics. There's that other circuit in parallel, but basically the wires go in and out of the circuit. If we change that switch to a dual pole, dual throw, DPDT switch, we can have another circuit on this side that we can latch on and off. And what I'd like to do, I mean, basically we could chuck a nine volt inside of that box, um, you know, which Velcro it in place or something. And then we'll throw an LED circuit there. Don't forget an LED is a diode that needs a resistor. It's also directional. We'll talk about that. An LED, you have to orient in the circuit the right way, positive and negative. Uh, it's a diode, so it only allows current flow in one direction, but also, it just won't light up. I don't think you can break them. I mean, you know, certain limits notwithstanding. I don't think you could break them if you put them in the wrong way, but when you go and try to use it, it won't light up because no current's flowing through it. So you do need a resistor in the circuit with that, and those are sized appropriately to generate the right um, forward voltage on the particular LED. These are also really easy to just spec on Amazon, especially if you're using something generic like a nine volt power supply. But point being, what we're gonna do is we're going to run into the same side of that switch so that our action, when this circuit is active, we are going to light up uh, or otherwise close that circuit and engage the LED. We're gonna install this little uh, LED resistor circuit. And then because I want to, I'm going to install another latching switch in line with this circuit on the, on the negative side. I think it's best practice to throw these switches on the negative side because I don't want to throw the foot switch in a case 
and then have it jostle around and accidentally hit the foot switch and then leave the LED on for a week. I don't want to change this battery all the time. When we look at an LED current draw of a couple milliamps, a nine volt will last a long, long time, especially considering how often it's on or off. But if I throw another switch in here, that means I'll have to turn this switch on in the event that we want the light to go on. You know, we'll do that as part of setting up for the gig. But more importantly, it's just that much less likely that accidentally this switch will be engaged and this switch will get depressed or switched on uh, while it sits in storage, you know, for the next gig or sits around the house. All right, so that means we just need to get all of the parts. So let's get all the parts. And here are the parts. I mean, this is about as simple as it gets. Here's our nine volt. We need a way to connect the nine volt into the circuit. So there's that. Here is our additional toggle switch. This is just a switch that I had lying around. So we'll use this to be the additional latching on or off for that circuit. This is the double pole, double throw switch. So we can use one side to solder in just like the current switch is. And then the other side we'll use to activate the LED circuit. And then this is the LED. Now this LED comes with, this is gonna be, I chose a white one. This already has the resistor soldered in, so it's that much easier. We're just gonna install it. Uh, and I got all these parts on Amazon, so I'll just include some Amazon links in the description for the video in case you wanna build your own LED circuit into something. Um, these are the parts that you can use to do that. All right, so let's get installing. The first step is gonna be taking the old parts out of the box. So let's get there, here we go. Really fine tip on this soldering pen, but that's okay, it'll work for this. I always tin the tip first, this way I get the transfer heat that much better. And let's just work on removing these joints. Okay. Let's take this guy out. to figure out where we are mounting the LED and where we are mounting the switch. Maybe the LED should just go top center. And this toggle switch, I think I'm also going to mount, right? I'm going to mount it on this face here because I don't want anything on the top. That would be silly with the foot switch here. I feel like it's sort of in the way on the sides. There's a wire coming out here anyway, so I think this is a good spot. Time to drill some holes. All right, now with the holes drilled for the LED and for the little switch, we can go ahead and start putting these things in. actually going to check out the wiring to see what I can solder to this before I install this in the plate because it's going to get a little tight in there. have the negative side back to the battery and so now we're going to work on the positive side um, from the battery over to the switch and then the switch to the LED. Alright, 
we're actually at a point now where we should be able to test the LED circuit. So let's plug the battery in and see if we have an LED that lights up. Battery's plugged in. Now if we press the foot switch, ah, perfect. So before we had no idea if this was on or off. It's definitely on now, perfect. But also, this switch should turn the LED off, and it sure does. Because if this is in storage, we'll leave this off, and if this accidentally gets kicked, then it won't do anything. Show up to the gig, turn that on, just make sure it's on, and then we're gold. Boost, no boost. Boost, no boost. All right. Let's reconnect the amp side and finish this bad boy up. And here we are with the whole circuit back together. Uh, we have the amp side back the way it was. Don't forget we took our we took our little notes to make sure we knew where the wires were going. So the amp side is back the exact same way that it was. We've just added another circuit in here that connects and disconnects a uh, nine volt battery to an LED so that now we know when this is on or off and it remains separate from the amp electronics, which is really cool. All right, let's put this all back together. Just figured I'd give you one shot of this with the battery Velcroed in. I think an improvement would be like a little acoustic guitar battery box cut into the side here so you could easily take it in and out, but I'm just Velcroing the battery because at the current draw of a single LED with the capacity of a single nine volt, I mean, it's like tens, if not a hundred hours of life so it's going to be on, what, a couple minutes a gig? I mean, that's a long time before I have to change this. And to change this, this is a rechargeable 9 volt, so I'll just open the case, recharge it, put it back in, and be done. Worst case, I'm back where I started with no indicator light. It's not critical to the functioning of the switch. All right, so here it is apart, and, and here it is put together. So it's exactly as we started, except... If you kick on the little circuit, now it tells you when it's on. That's pretty cool. Built in little safety. Very awesome. Let's go hear it. All right, we'll just use camera audio for this, but what you're seeing here is my live rig, the amp in the center, the Z Antidote. That's the amp that I bring out now. And then here's what I have on the floor at almost every gig. I got the pedal board front and center. Um, I got the wah pedal off to the right and then I got off the board, and then on the left, I've been using the amp foot switch, which is a, a boost, effectively. Is awesome so now I do know if it's on or if it's off very cool I'll see you guys in the next project